My name's Lorraine, I'm an alcoholic. That's what she said. You know, go find somebody who's a suspect. And the first person I thought of was Kat. So I want to welcome the family. Uh, the families of, of us that come to Alcoholics Anonymous, whether you're in here or not, means the world. And I know it does to Kat, so I have to say that first. Today, we ended. Well, at 8.45 for the last year on a Saturday morning, Kat and I have, have met and I've read the book to her. And when I got to a vision for you, she started crying and said, oh my God, we've only got a couple of weeks. Can you make it go longer? So for two weeks, we just visited and chatted and caught up. This morning was the real deal. We did the last page and we both cried because her heart is in this thing. She has got more humility than I'll ever wish to have. She does it with dignity and grace, and I know she doesn't like those words, but it's the truth. So come on, girlfriend. My name's Kat, and I'm an alcoholic. Hey. Yes. Whew. Super nervous. You know, my alcoholic brain was like thinking I'm going to be in a gymnasium full of people. But of course, it's this room and it's a lot smaller. My sister, Teresa, <clears throat> told you you get to do a lot of uncomfortable things in AA and that your legs and arms won't fall off. I feel like they might fall off. I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> I have a sobriety date of July 13th, 2019. <clears throat> I have a home group, Sisters in Recovery, in Linwood off of 196. If you're a woman in recovery... I invite you because it's a special group we have there. Could be biased, but oh, I think we're special. <laughs> I have a service position and I have a sponsor, and I sponsor women in the program. I was born in Portland, Oregon. Um, both my parents worked at Nordstrom and they had this <clears throat> beautiful little princess that they love to dress up. <laughs> me. <laughs> it looked like I came out of the catalog, but as soon as I could dress myself, I like to wear the boys' clothes. <laughs> um, you know, always felt different my whole life. Um, maybe it's the alcoholism in me, but you know, I am different and I'm comfortable today and I'm okay saying that I'm different. Um, so I grew up in Portland. Uh, Sorry, I knew this was going to happen. Go blank. Um, my dad is in the program and he's here tonight. He's been sober most of my life. Um, and he's he's been a really good example for me. Um, my mom, um, she struggled with alcoholism. And growing up, there was a lot of love in our house, but there was also a lot of chaos. Uh, my mom kicked my dad out a lot of his own house, <laughs> and he had to move out, and then he could move back in, um, and I vividly remember my mom, you know, struggling with alcoholism. I didn't understand what alcoholism was at all, um, but I remember sitting in a parking lot with her, and my twin brother's in the back, and she's waiting for the liquor store to open and pours it in her Diet Coke. I didn't understand that um, whatsoever. Um, we ended up moving to Yakima. Um, my dad was a store manager at Nordstrom and, uh, I spent the weekend with, um, a friend and came home and something just didn't feel right. Um, my brothers were crying. It's like everybody knew something wasn't right. Um, my dad found a letter in his underwear drawer and my mom had left us, um, and she couldn't take it anymore. And that's due to alcoholism. Um, but my dad stayed strong during then. He, uh, he took care of us. He did what he had to do to make sure we survived. And he didn't drink over it. Um, and, you know, the older that I am and me dealing with alcoholism, I mean, that's a huge deal. <clears throat> we ended up moving to Kirkland and... Um, my dad did have a bit of a relapse there, and I didn't understand, I didn't understand alcoholism, why he couldn't stop drinking, but I remember being a child and being like, I'm never going to touch alcohol. Mm -hmm. Well, I turned 13, and 
<laughs> get some friends. And before I've even ever drank, I stole beer. So it had me before I even drank. Um, we stole a bunch of Mike's Hard Lemonade, and I had it in my backpack. And we were going to miss the bus going to Bellevue Square, and I'm running down the bus hill with the um, glass bottles clanking, and they all broke. <laughs> so my backpack and me soaking in alcohol. So of course we go steal more. <laughs> Um, you know, people say the first time they drank, they felt that ease and comfort. I didn't feel that. I would kind of felt, well, that's it. But I wanted more. Um, once I started drinking, I, I couldn't stop. I mean, if I stopped, it was because I couldn't get it. Um, you know, alcohol has, since day one, put me into some pretty scary situations where... I wake up the next morning not knowing if I had had consensual, consensual sex or not. Um, just put me in really awful situations, but I still kept drinking. You know, I have found the people that like to drink, but nobody drank as much as me. Um, I found two friends, one drank more than me, and, you know, we were always kicked out of parties and... <laughs> Um, but it, she was pretty intense. I mean, we got in a fight with people. It was terrible. And, um, my other friend that drank like me, he's no longer with us. He died the first, or he died the day before his 30th birthday. Um, those are the people I hung out with because I felt safe and comfortable with. <clears throat> um, I continued to drink knowing I had a problem and my dad told me, you know, you need AA and I was like, oh, that doesn't work, you know, like I'm not going to AA. Sometimes I'd go to his home group and sit in the back and it was a perfect meeting to go to because you don't get called on. <laughs> they just share openly. <laughs> um, and I just, I, I knew there was a problem, but I couldn't stop. Um, and the older I got, the worse my drinking got. <clears throat> I, uh, you know, it was... I got to a point where I'd go through a bunch of different jobs because my drinking got so bad that they'd kind of catch on and then I'd quit or leave. Um, I was doing a low volt electrical job for a while and I was succeeding really well. And I actually had about three months sober because I was trying to quit on my own. Um, and actually in the interview, they said, well, are you comfortable with ladders? Because you'll be climbing 30 feet up telephone poles. And in my head, I said, what if I drink? That's not going to be good. Well, I turned my car into a bar, my work vehicle. And I drank like a maniac. And I climbed up 30 feet on a pole. And I came tumbling down when I was going to latch on. Um, broke my ribs on my left side. And came to, to the homeowner screaming at the front of the house. Like this awful awful scream and uh, the medics were called and the first female medic walks up. I used to be an EMT. So I was like, Oh no, she came up and she goes, Whoa, because I reeked of alcohol. And so I avoided them. I had beer all over the car and somehow I got away with it. I always got away with my drinking. There was beer in the car. I ran to the car before my boss came and I threw the empty cans in somebody's trash can. Um, and when I got my work vehicle back, there was still alcohol in there and somebody else had driven that and somehow I still got away. You know, I've been in accidents where I hit and run and state patrol showing up at my dad's house because I left my ID with him. And everybody was like, well, she looked really out of it. She must have been in shock. No, I was shit faced and <laughs> excuse my language and on pills like it was not good. Um, So after I fell, I got another couple months sober and I started working at a new job in HVAC. And um, shortly after, you know, I was at the gym one morning and I had maybe about five months sober. And I was on the treadmill and I was like, wow, I really want to drink right now. So I just got off the treadmill immediately and I was terrified. I uh, was ripping my steering wheel, like driving past every gas station. Like, you just got to get home. You just got to get home. And I went home and I went straight to the line and I chugged the whole thing. Um, I went to work. I couldn't stop drinking for a few days. I went to work. It was turned that car into a bar. 
And the next thing I know is I'm waking up to my phone buzzing and I don't know how I got home. And my boss has called, where are you? Come outside, I'm here, I'm covered in urine. And I do the walk of shame out to the car and he's like, what's going on? Well, thankfully he struggles with addiction too. He said, I'm gonna give you the week off. And I was grateful for that, but I pretended to go to work and I sat in parks and I drank in my car alone. Um, my partner, she couldn't find me uh, cause I was passed out in the car. She knew I had a drinking problem. Um, and I come to at three in the morning and freezing cold, covered in urine, can't find my phone. And somehow my work phone was in there. So I called her from there to come pick me up. And she picked me up. I uh, got home, oh, I'm never gonna do this again. She went to work the next day and I'm gonna go get my car, walk into Walgreens and buy a bunch of shooters. <laughs> Find myself out in the parking lot again and you know, I'm drinking and I can't stop. I can't, I wanna die. Like, um, I sat there and um, <coughs> I don't know, somehow my, my partner had found me and I ended up going to the hospital suicidal and um, really intoxicated. And of course, when I sobered up in the hospital, no, 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 I don't wanna kill myself. And they're rolling their eyes and just another drunk. And I was an EMT, so I know I've been the one eye rolling at drunks, even though I felt their pain and knew exactly what they were going through. I was on the other end this time. Uh, the social worker there handed me a pamphlet and he said, here's some meetings, you should go to one. Um, I took the pamphlet and, you know, I'm never gonna drink again. And I get home and my partner takes all my debit cards, credit cards, and puts a tracker on my phone while she goes to work. And she forgot one credit card. I left the phone at home and I walked and I was drinking again. Um, the next day she had off and it was a Saturday. Um, <clears throat> I had that pamphlet and I was staring at it and I was like, well, I'll go to an AA meeting, whatever, it'll get everybody off my case. And it looks like I'm doing something. And I was staring at the pamphlet and I had been to the Alano Club in Linwood before. Like I drank beers in the parking lot and sat there and I was like, this place is not for me. Like, no, thank you. Um, and I saw women's. And so I was like, well, I'll choose between these two women's meeting. Um, and then I picked Sisters in Recovery, which is my home group. I walked in at 10.01, meeting starts at 10. Thought I'd slide in the back <laughs> and all eyes were on me. <laughs> they knew. They're hunters, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I sat in that room and they said, is there anyone here? who has less than 30 days or new to recovery. And I wasn't gonna say a damn word, but God hit me on the back of the back and I said, my name's Kat and I'm an alcoholic and I started bawling. Um, I could not stop crying. Um, and I just remember the love in that room. And I can't remember much of what people said, but I do remember one person and that was Lorraine, my sponsor. And she looked at me at the meeting and she got called on and she said, baby, you don't ever have to drink again. And I just started bawling. It was like that we were connected right then and there and I didn't even know it. Um, I thought she was crazier than shit for saying I never had to drink again and I didn't believe her. But somehow I decided to be helpful and put a chair away. And I regretted that instantly because this woman came up to me and she was my first sponsor. And she came up to me like we do every Saturday morning to the newcomer. And she said, do you need a sponsor? And I was like, uh, okay. And uh, she's like, Get, take your phone out. And I have my phone and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to put a number in. My phone's not working. And she was even like, what's going on here? And I was like, I don't know. And I was shaking so bad, like not even 24 hours sober. And I was doing everything that I could like not to drink. You know, I wanted to leave that meeting and I wanted to go to 7-Eleven and buy beer, even though I had a tracker on my phone. I was like, I'll stop real quick. 
Um, I walk out of the meeting, everybody's laughing and having a good time and I'm running for my car. Um, I get in my car and my phone starts ringing and it's my first sponsor. And I'm like, why is she calling me already? And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, what did I do? I was like, I don't want to sponsor. I don't want to do this AA thing. And I answer the phone and I'm like, hello. And she's like, she didn't mean to call me. She butt dialed me. And I was God right there. Um, I spoke to her the whole way home and I didn't stop at that 7-Eleven and I didn't get um, any alcohol. And since that day, I haven't had a drink. Um, I did not know when I walked into that meeting that I was done drinking. I didn't know that I would be willing to work a program of recovery, but everything just fell into place and it really changed my life. Um, at about a year sober, I uh, kind of knew with my sponsor that I could get away with kind of anything and I didn't really have to, I was stuck on my amends and she was going through something and, you know, I, my expectations of her were probably not that great. If they were, you know, I expected more out of her. Like, I, what do I know what a sponsor is supposed to do, you know? <clears throat> so, you know, I knew I was getting away with you know, not doing the program and Lorraine called me and she said that I needed to get a new sponsor and that I know who it is. And I was like, yeah, I know. And she's like, and you know who it is? Yeah, I do. And then I hung up with her and I sat there and I took a deep breath and I called her back and I said, Lorraine, would you be my sponsor? And she said it would be an honor and a privilege. <clears throat> the last year has been absolutely amazing. Um, I now get to walk with women through the book, um, and watch them grow and blossom. And it's been really beautiful. I mean, there have been some things that have happened in my life. My sponsor said year two, it's, it sucks. Well, the day before, <laughs> the day before my second birthday, my partner leaves and she's gone. And then, you know. Uh, I call her again two weeks later, and I said, well, this has happened too, and we just start laughing. You know, because of this program and my relationship with my higher power, I know that no matter what happens in my life, that I don't have to drink, and that I'm going to be okay, and that it's okay to just be okay. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you.